Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be checking out a beautiful dairy farm in the province of British Columbia. This is two provinces over from where I'm from, Saskatchewan. It's all the way on the west coast and uh, they got some pretty cool farms out here. The farm we're checking out today is a 60 stall robotic rotary parlor from Gia. You heard that correct, it's a robotic rotary. Uh, this farm is truly incredible. The parlor is insane. They got basically 60 robots on a rotary turning around, automatically milking cows. They milk about 1,200 cows at this farm and uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm excited to show you guys. Well, we're here in BC at the first dairy farm with John. How's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Good, sure. Um, we got, uh, we're milking 1,150 cows on a 60 stall Gia robotic rotary. Um, first one in North America. Um, milk about just over 300 cows an hour, one person, one person pushing, all flush barns. And um, don't raise any young stock here. So it's all milk cows. Cool. <laughs> so all flush barns. Um, everything comes to the center point of the, each barn, flush three times a day when the cows are out. Uh, it's a three, and a three to three and a half percent slope, so we can't flush when the cows are in the barn. Um, half a percent slope on the sand lane. We get about 95% recovery on the sand. That's pretty uh, good. Gets stored behind you in the pile behind you. Uh, clean the sand lane out five times a day and put bed, bed down when necessary, usually once a week. And um, yeah, good for mastitis control. Never have to worry about coliform. Don't Sweet. Have to vaccinate for it or anything. So, huh. yeah. Yeah, I can see the slope on these barns is pretty aggressive. Yeah. So the old barns are 250 feet long, and they were 3% slope. Um, the the newest barn in 2016, we did two big uh, six-row barns. One's two and a half percent, and this one that you see right here is almost four percent, just wow. based on our land lay and how we needed the flush to go. So. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So all the manure is processed up here, the um, flush water gets processed in there on the DT360, um, gets pressed out into solids. A conveyor system is just new this year for storage. It actually added about twice the storage that we had before um, with the pile. And then um, after the processing of the liquids go back into the slurry store and then we'll use the top 10 feet to flush back into our barns again. Huh. That is sweet. So that right there, that kind of tower set up is a conveyor yeah. for lots of storage. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have it. The plow just sits at the end right now. It'll pile that up till it gets to the very top. Uh, it'll work its way to the front. We, it's so brand new. We haven't even got that far yet. And typically by the time we get, we only got about halfway, I could push the plow to the back again and it, it would have settled 10 feet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, recently we just, right after the corn was done, we just went and spread a bunch of it and uh, our loader was having to work hard to get the bottom stuff peeled up. That's how much it packs down. Oh yeah, I believe so, that. And then we keep about 40 feet on the left-hand side for um, waste feed and any chicken manure that we get from the local farmers. So oh, we, sweet. So we can decide which what, what goes where. Okay. Chicken manure's got way more value. So I guess I got a question now. Do you need to store all of your manure on concrete or something or can you put it on dirt? We store it, it all has to be stored on concrete. If, oh, it, yeah. if it's on dirt, it either has to be spread, especially in the field. I think they give you like two weeks to do it or something, oh, wow. or you've got actually covered in the field and it's huh. just not worth it for us. So putting this conveyor system in was a good answer to, uh, to storage. So it'll, it'll get us through the, um, to the cropping season in May again before we plant, and then it'll go through the summer and then we'll spread it right when the corn's done. That is cool. That's something I've never thought of farming in Sask, like building such a fancy manure storage, but it makes sense out here. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah, cool. Well, it land at a premium too. You kind of want to keep it piled on top of each other. You don't want to be laying it out. Oh, Just, for sure. Yeah. So what do we got here? Three Lagoon system. Um, everything that comes off the slurry store on the bottom, it burps off uh, about 900 to 1,000 gallons every 45 minutes. That'll go into our North Lagoon, settles out. And uh, when it tops off, it'll go into our South Lagoon. So you got a little bit of cleaner water. Most of our liquid that goes on the field to so the drag line will go through that one first. And then uh, we build a third lagoon 
four years ago that we're just waiting to start using. Right now it's just storing rainwater, which actually helps too when you need some. And uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Separation systems in here. Um, display screen, you probably don't see that. Sure. So basically everything's run off the computer. Um, there's an app for the phone, it's right here. I can see my DT360 speeds, amps. I can do my conveyor. I can change anything. 27 feet, I can see where the slurry store levels are at. And everything works off liquid sensors. That is That's sweet. This is a 150 horsepower pump, you said? Yeah, 150 horsepower electric. And we can pull out of any of our lagoons that we have. It's all hydraulic, hydraulic pump driven now. We can open and close gates as we need to be, as we need to be. Pressurized system runs off the BFD right here. So basically once you're set up, you can remotely access it from the tractor, turn it off, move your line, start up. That is cool. So they're able to drag line straight from their like home base manure management setup here. And they got some outlets in the field that they can hook up to with some lines they laid in the field. So never seen that before, it's pretty cool. The panels and let it fall. Gotcha. So the feeder is just cleaning them every day. So now these last few days it's been like the local farmer. One of the newest barns we built in 2016 when we put the rotary in. Um, one side is a three-row barn. It's got about 180 cows. I, we, we'd consider our low group, which is 180 days plus pregnant. Uh, they're in this group. And then uh, the group to your right is uh, we made the group a bit smaller with more crossovers and water bowls. And that's our zero to 30 day fresh cow group. Um, just basically uh, fans above the stalls, no mister system. We chose to go just with fans above the stalls, which is, I think works really good here. Yeah. Um, typically open all year. Just finished putting garage doors and curtains in for the two to three weeks of this winter that us humans think it's too cold. <laughs> Cows don't care. No. <laughs> oh, I guess you got curtains along the sides yeah. there all? Yeah, so that basically just got all got installed. We used to have no curtains here. Just the winters are getting a little bit too long with our flush not not oh, for right. cow travel or anything just um the flush that a little bit of a freezing on there and then to start cleaning it out with the number of the cows we're milking you're you're just working around cows too much so we thought we'd just put the garage doors in and the curtains on the sides makes sense so as you can see that our pusher is getting the cows right now he'll come in the back of the group he'll walk up one side cleaning the shit out of the stalls and as he comes around he'll hit a button on the front if you look around the corner here There's a side button on there. It times out seven minutes. It gives them seven minutes to get out of the group for the rest of the cows. And then the flush will start at sequence. It'll be five flushes with the intervals in between. And then the other alley will go same thing. 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. And then it'll create a wave effect. Because with the sand bedding and the slope that we have, you need to get a wave effect. Otherwise, this, it just trails. Okay. So. so that's your, that big blue tank over there. It's all, it fills up and then it's all gravity fed into these barns. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll flush. So each group flushes probably about, I'm gonna say 20,000 gallons an alley. And that takes just over almost two feet out of that slurry store. And then by the time it's done flushing one side, it recouped enough to do the other side. And then by the time the group is done milking, it recoups enough to do the next group. So. Cool. Now it's gonna create a barrier before the next wave stop, starts. Because if I would flush in a constant, the water would just trail off in between the sands and it'll never take it away. So how many tons of forage would you harvest per acre out here? Uh, this past year, 
for corn silage, we average just over 18 tons an acre on 900 acres. And grass silage, our first cut, you're gonna average around, well, with cover crop, probably eight to 10. And then the last three, three remaining cuts, you're gonna be about two tons an acre. Huh. Yeah. So you got some silage pits here? Yeah, so one's corn, one's, uh, actually they're both corn. They're both corn bunkers covered up from this, this year's corn. Um, basically one just sheet of plastic and separated manure on top. Keeps the weight down um, better than using tires. And Yeah, that's the first thing I noticed pulling into your yard here. I was like, where are your guys' tires? They're, they're throwing yeah. dirt, but I guess manure solids. Yeah, it's all separated manure on there. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keeps a good pack on it. What am I supposed to do? So this is your... Uh... So the commodity base, um, sawdust just for a maternity pen. That's the only thing we use the sawdust for. Straw, beet pulp, uh, feeder alfalfa just goes to our dry cow groups. We don't feed any good alfalfa hay. We have enough grass silage, um, especially with the cover crop we get in. And excess canola from our bin. And right there, we have a byproduct that we pick up every night out of Vancouver. It's um, soybean, so when they're done making soy milk, we pick up their waste. So I, I guess that's our one up on the people that are making soy milk, hey? Eh? Yeah, their byproduct. There, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this byproduct's good for cows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, yeah. Uh, moisture, same. Oh, same. That's what? a liquid. Oh, really? That's a solvent. Yeah. 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 Well, that is some weird stuff. Yeah. So then, the downside or negative side of that, feed. Feed value is really good. Negative side, its shelf life is like a day. Oh, all right. right. I can't, we'll pick it up once a week. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then feed it all week. And it's One milker, one pusher, milks about just like uh, 300, 320 cows an hour if you're, you got the cows are clicking pretty good. Um, yeah, everything in one in the inflation, washing, milking, stimmy pulse, prep, T tip is all in one. Milker is basically just here to monitor, he's not here to hang machines. Uh, the only reason he would hang any machines, especially in the group that you actually see on the camera, is they'd be the low group. So they if you think about their milking, they should only be milked twice a day, but um, we milk them three times a day just because it's part of the sequence. That's insane. 300 to 320 cows an hour with one person. And he's not even doing any manual work. He's just like looking for cows that maybe accidentally came off. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Majority of the time he's going to spend just um, looking at the screen. It's all color coded. Group num group color is one group, so we're lot eight. Be brown. Uh, yellow cows is the ones that he would go to. Anything that's green, light green or dark green, I mean it's milking or it's in the process of coming off. Um, gives gives the average that they should give for the milking. The milking they give right now shows you what quarters are milking. Uh, the blue is attachment. Eight, eight, so he's right now he's doing eight minutes a turn. Very long. And the crowd gate works on a, an eight stall interval. So every eight stalls that fill up with the cow, the crowd gate will turn on for about eight to 10 seconds. So literally the milker doesn't go get the next cow either. The pusher's already gone getting the next group. Is there feed on the rotary to Nothing encourage? Here. No? No, would never do it. Yeah, the cows just get on right over there and the robots get to work hanging the milkers under. Crazy.
This is their holding area. You see they got two massive fans up here to just push air over top of the cows. That crowd gate is automatically moving as the rotary is spinning. And you can see behind the crowd gates, the next group is already being loaded in here. So cows are pushed into the rotary, goes back and grabs the next group right away and feeds him in. This is efficient, man. these happy cows <laughs> nice viewing room up here boardroom over there pretty cool so you can see how calm the cows are no feed in there no grain watch them chew their cud. Yeah, some guys swear by it, putting feet on the rotary, but, yeah. and then yeah. the next guy is, nope, don't need it. Yeah. I, I'd be just, for this parlor, I'd be a little concerned about like um, electronics, All with right. mice and stuff like that. True. And it's a lot of extra cleaning at the end. Well, thanks for the awesome tour there. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming out. I enjoyed having you guys. Show you a little bit around. Yeah. Get a piece of what it's like life in Chilliwack. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah.